Hello, test. Hello? My history with face motion capture is long. It's kind of worked, kind of not worked. It's kind of hard to get if you don't have the industry equipment, but you know what is accessible? After Effects. And I have a history of using programs that aren't meant to be used together. In After Effects, when you're tracking a mask, there is an option to track facial features. I have a script that will convert null object track to a Python script that can be run in Blender and create empties inside of Blender. What if I could mask my face from a video, track those facial features with After Effects, get a bunch of null object to follow each facial feature and then use this script to export those tracks as empties in Blender and then parent the armature bones to each empty in Blender. And then there you go, you have facial motion capture from After Effects to Blender. Now, I know what you're thinking, there are a lot of easier ways to do this. There are a lot of AI-based tools now on the internet. You could probably find something that does this like 10 times better. This is kind of like a dumb experiment that happened to produce usable results for me, so I figured I'd make a video about it, because it could actually help. So if you're looking for the easiest way to do this, maybe don't do this. Think of this as one of those science experiments you got as a kid that came in a kit, except not as cool. Hello? There I am, making a bunch of terrifying faces into the camera. They are, in fact, terrifying. Look at that. The facial motion capture still works, no matter what your face looks like. So, first order of business was to mark this mask. You see this mask right here? It's surrounding my face, like so. So you're left with this, nothing special. Top left, you can see the tracker. Selected my mask, went to the tracker, and I selected face tracking detailed features. So I clicked track and let that simmer for a while. And what you get is this effect, face track points. So it doesn't act as an actual mask track. It actually applies an effect to your footage. You have left eye, right eye, nose, and each one of these features has like several properties like nose bridge, nose tip. Maybe there's an easier way to do this, but I made a null object for each facial feature that I could find in this effects panel. Every subcategory, right eye, eyebrow, inner, middle, outer. So I made a null object for each one of these little track points. And I know what you're thinking, why can't I just parent each null to each effect property? These effect properties aren't actual positional objects that you can parent another object to. Experts out there, maybe I missed something, but I don't think you can do this without expressions. So I wrote an expression that I basically applied to every single null object. To write an expression for a property, you alt click the property. And I wrote this expression. So right here is the name of your video. I just named mine video. This comp means the comp that we're in right now. Dot effect. So we're accessing the effects. The name of the effect, which is in this case face track points. And then the property of that effect. Depending on which facial feature you're assigning that null object to, you just type the property in there. And that will automatically give it positional data. So each of these red squares, those are all null objects and they are all following the facial features on my face. I just realized I'm using expressions to define a facial expression. All of these null objects are actually paired to another null object. Well, that's because if you notice, people's heads move around in the video and those facial tracks are going to move with the whole person's head. So if I exported all these null objects as empties in Blender, they're, they're going to move all around the screen and they're going to warp the mesh all over the place because my head was actually moving in the video because that's what humans do. So I had to find a way to neutralize the head movement and leave only the facial movement. So I came up with this expression, which I honestly can't tell if it is like scientifically the right thing to do. It seems to work for me. I set two different properties equal to two different track points, T1 and T2. This is the inner eye and this is the inner eye. As a human, you shouldn't really be able to move that part of your eye. Those parts of your eye are stationary relative to your head. What if I could find the average of those two and then invert the movement? The T1 plus T2 divided by two, so you find the average, times negative one. So I inverted the movement and then I just parented everything to this. It looks like it cancels out the movement of the head. So I set the parent of every single null object to that null. Okay, now we get to the script. Now, I forget where I found this script. It's been around for a while. I know there's like a million different versions of it, but you can see it says blend 2.7. As Blender users know, that's like ancient history for Blender now. We're up to like 2.9 something. We're almost up to Blender 3.0. It's supposed to be able to take a camera solve from After Effects in the Blender, and it works pretty well for that, but I'm using it for very much not its purpose. If you select every single null object and hit export here, it's going to make a Python script that you can run in Blender, and when you run it in Blender, it'll recreate every single null object as empties, and then we can proceed with our evil plan. So here we are in the ancient Blender 2.79. I haven't seen this since 2018. And on the left side, I've opened up that Python script that that script from After Effects has generated. So remember, we used the After Effects script to create yet another script, but this one is a Python script. It is 137,000 lines of code. So we're gonna run it and 
and see what happens. And this is what we're left with. If you notice, it kind of looks like a face because those are our null objects, but now they're empties. They move like a face and they are a face. They stay exactly in the same spot because we've neutralized the head movement. So we can actually use this in a modern version of Blender, which is what I'm going to do. So here we are in Blender 2.93. They all have their translational data or positional data. I made this empty. I parented all of these null objects. So now I can just, you know, move them around. And then I made an armature object. So you can do shift D to duplicate. I would select a null object first and I would take this armature hit tab to edit it, shift D, shift S, selection to cursor. So it will pop that armature bone directly to the null object. So I did that once for each null object. Then with the armature selected, you do control tab, that'll enter pose mode. And then I selected each bone and went to the bone constraint tab, right? That's different from the object constraint. I set a copy location constraint. Now here's our setup from the side so you can see what's happening. I would set the object to be copying uh, to the null object that each armature bone corresponds to. So for example, this armature bone corresponds to the outer right eyebrow. So I set that as the target, and then I selected the X and Z axes as the axes to copy the location of. We don't want to select Y, this is X, and this is Z. So it's up and down from the 2D perspective of our bones. So I did that for each and every bone. I made sure that these are oriented correctly. So they should all be facing your null objects. I'm not gonna show this part, but for my human model, I went to make human, which is a great program for making humans. Here he is. Then I tried to make it so that each bone was just semi in contact with the mesh. So I did this in pairs, right? All of these bones originated along the same plane right here. And then I just, I would select each pair and then move them back even with that done you'll notice that not all the bones actually are protruding from the mesh the same amount because my face wasn't perfectly in a symmetrical orientation in the video when we started this is good enough so then you select your human and then you select your armature you do control p with automatic weights so it's going to actually warp the mesh according to automatically generated weighting spoiler alert this does not come out perfectly go into weight paints in your vertex groups you'll be able to see each bone and how it's being weighted so i've already fixed mine you Use your weight tools and basically draw in exactly where you think that weighting should go. This upper cheekbone, for example, controlled like the whole head. Localize the movement to just the facial feature. Create a vertex group of just where you want the movement to occur. Select all the points that you want to be moving. Hit assign. Your modifiers under the armature modifier, set that as the vertex group. It won't move anything outside of that vertex group. You get these really extreme creases now, but see, it is working. It's looking really cool already. Extreme, extreme creases. Because our model is not extremely high poly. I applied a corrective smooth modifier. I set a subdivision surface. That smoothed it out real nice and it pretty much looks the way you'd expect a human to look now kind of it, it looks pretty cool i was kind of happy with it at this point i mean if you're trying to get some rough facial approximations this is a pretty cool way to do it we've taken a video and we've gotten this from that video hello test hello test hello